In this tutorial, we are going to talk about static equilibrium. So here's a question for you. The question is saying a uniform beam weighs 50 newtons. The beam is secured to the wall by a hinge. If the beam is in a static equilibrium in a horizontal position, as shown below, how large is the tension in the upper cable and what is the force exerted by the hinge on the beam? Okay, now, we have the diagram here, and we do know that in the force supported by the rope is what we call the tension force. Now, the tension force which they are talking about here is this one. So, this is going to be our tension. Okay, that is our tension force. Now, this tension force, it is applied at an angle. So, it's going to have the, X, the Y component and the X component. So we know that this angle which we have here, which is at 7 degrees, if we have this, the angle which is here is the same as the angle which is there, meaning that this part here we are going to have at 37. Okay? So we know that according to Sokatoa, before we even go there, we know that this is going to be our Ty and this is going to be our Tx. So using Sokatoa, We can see that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is T, then opposite is Ty, meaning that this is going to be uh, the T sine 37. Okay, this is going to be the T cos 37, cos theta, which is 37. Now, after, after having that, we can now work out on what? The beam. So we have the beam. The length of the beam, we have been told that from this point all the way to somewhere here, it is 100 centimeters. So this 100 centimeters, if I want to convert centimeters into meters, I need to divide it by a, a 100. So I'm saying, I'm going to say 100 divided by 100, I'm going to get a 1. Okay? Meaning that from this point here, from this point here, all the way to this line, this is one, one meter. Okay, then from here all the way to there, it is 40 centimeters. If you want to, to convert centimeters into meters, divide it by 100. So 40 divided by 100 is 0 0.4, meaning that from here all the way to there is 0 0.4 meters. Now we have the weight of the beam. Now the weight of the beam... For this beam to balance, meaning that this weight is somewhere here in between of the beam. Okay, so that is the 50 newtons. Now, in between, we can say that this is somewhere here in between of the beam. So, there we are going to find what? We are going to find a 50 newtons. Now, in between, we know that from this beam which we have here, the length we can add now. We have a 1 from here from here all the way to there. Then you also have 0 0.4 from there to there. So we can add 1 plus 0 0.4, we are going to get a 1.4. Okay? Now, to get in between, meaning that the distance is going to be 1.4 divided by 2. So what is 1.4 divided by 2? is 0 0.7. Meaning that from this point here, all the way to where the 50 is, is just basically 0 0.7 meters. Okay? Now, here is our hinge. This hinge, we are going to get it as what? The point of axis. That will be our pivot. That will be our pivot. Okay? Meaning that we don't have any torque at this point. Now, what we have to understand is that whenever we are talking about static equilibrium, we are talking about three things. The summation of all the torque, the summation of all the torque, when we add them, they're supposed to give us zero. The summation of all the forces in x direction, they're supposed to be equal to zero. The summation of all the forces in y direction, they're supposed to be equal to zero. Okay. Now, our goal is to find the tension force, meaning that I can use only the summation of the torque to come up with the tension force. 
because I have got the ty there which we are saying it is t sin theta which is sin 37 okay so I can use only the summation of the torque to come up with the answer so I'm going to say that the summation of all the torque is going to be equal to zero what torque do we have how many torques do we, are, we, are we going to get now from this beam we can see that we have got three forces which are acting we have the force which is acting down this one now let's call this one as torque one we have this 50 newtons which is going to be pushing the beam in this direction let's call that one as torque two we have the uh, the ty which is going to be pushing the beam in this direction let's call that one as torque three now what we have to understand is that this torque we have got one torque which is going in this direction and two torque which are going in this direction so you can either assign this as a positive and these as negative or vice versa it's the same thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign uh, these torque which are have which are going um, uh, in clockwise to be negative so I'm going to say that negative torque one minus torque two is going to be plus that torque is is going to be positive has to be equal to zero now after doing this we need to understand that torque is equal to the force times the displacement which is the distance okay so what I'm going to do now is I can shift this these two to the other side I can remain with the uh, t3 this time so I'm going to have t3 is going to be equal to torque 1 plus torque 2 so I know that force this is going to be the force 3 times the distance is equal to this is going to be the force 1 times d plus torque 2 times d now <clears throat> what you have to understand here now is this the force 3 is the ten, is the ty so ty we know that ty is t sine 37 times the distance the distance is from this point all the way to the point of axis to a point of what uh, to the pivot in short so the distance is 100 and we know that 100 divided by 100 we have found that it is 1 here we found that it was 1 so we are going to put a 1 here we are done with this has to be equal to force 1 we are talking about this which is 100 newtons we have been told that that is 100 newtons times the distance from this point all the way to the to our pivot which is what uh, a 1.5 because it's going to be 100 plus 40 centimeters which is 140 divided by 100 1.4 so it's going to be 1.4 plus talk 2 we are, we are talking about this now the force is 50 the distance is from this point all the way to this point we found that it was 0 0.7 so it's going to be times 0 0.7 so what you're going to have here is going to be t sin 37 is going to be equal to what is 100 times 1.4 I'm getting 140 plus 15 times 0 0.7 I'm getting a 35 so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add t sin 37 is going to be 35 plus 140 I'm getting 175 okay 175 so what I'm going to do now I'm going to divide both sides for me to find the tension force I'm going to divide both sides by um, sin 37 so I'm going to say that t sin 37 is equal to 175 let's divide both sides by sin 37 divide both sides by sin 37 t is going to be we know that these two they will cancel so we have 137 divided by sin 37 which is um 175 divided by sin 37 so i'm getting a 290 point a 290.787 which is just the same as uh 79 newtons so this is the answer for part one which is the tension force so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this tension here we are saying that our tension is a uh, 290.79 newtons we are done with that one let's now go ahead and 
find the what? Eh? The they want us to find. Let me get rid of this now. They want us to find uh, the force exerted by the hinge. Okay. Now here is the hinge. So we have got the force exerted by the hinge in x direction, and the force exerted by the hinge in y direction, which is going to be f h y. So let's remember that we have got the y component and the x component here, and we have the third seven here, and we say that this was t cos t7 and this was t sin t7 what we have to know now is this we are going to get the summation we know that the the net force when you have got the force in this direction also have the force in this direction the net force is going to be in this direction meaning that that will be the force exerted by the hinge so what we have there is we have this the force exerted by the hinge in y direction the force exerted by the hinge in x direction now the net force is here the force exerted by the hinge this is the force we, are, we want to find so we know that i can get this and put it here which is going to be uh, the force exerted by the hinge in y direction and i get rid of this now to find the force exerted by the hinge is going to be the force exerted by the hinge the square root of the force exerted by the hinge in x direction squared plus the force exerted by the hinge in y direction we square it that would be now the force exerted by what the hinge now to find that one we need to find the fhx and the fhy so to do that we are going to to get the summation of all the forces in x direction when we add them they're supposed to give us zero what force do we have we have t cos theta which is pointing toward negative we also have t uh, fhx which is pointing toward positive so i'm going to say that fhx minus the t uh, cos what set seven is equal to zero so i can shift this to the other side i'm going to say that this is going to be t cos set seven so my fhx is going to be equal to my t is a uh, 290.79 cos theta 7 so what will be our fhx so we have 290.79 then we have cos theta 7 so i'm getting a uh, 232.22.23 okay newtons so this is the x component of the uh, the force exerted by the hinge which is 232.23 newtons so what we're going to do now is we find the one in y direction so we're going to sum to to get the summation of all the forces in y direction we are going to say that the sum of all the forces in y direction we add them they're supposed to give us zero what forces do we have in y direction we have the force exerted by the the beam which is uh pointing toward y we have the force exerted by this block which is 100 newtons another force exerted by the the uh exerted by the the beam we have the tension force now the y component which is t sin theta and also the fhy so we are going to say that the f h y which is pointing up plus t sin that 7 is pointing up as well minus 50 is pointing down minus what 100 has to be equal to 0 what i'm going to do is fhx fhy sorry plus the t is a 290.79 sin 7 minus negative 50 minus 100 is 150 has to be equal to 0 what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that i'm going to rewrite this and say uh, we are going to have we are going to have two we're going to have 290 okay we're going to have 290.79 we have sin 37 minus 150 okay so this is giving me 25 so it's giving me so it's going to be plus when 5 is equal to 0 so we're going to have the fhy 
is going to be equal to negative 25 newtons. So this is the FHY which is at negative 25 newtons. So what I'm going to do now is I need to find the force exerted by the hinge. To find the force exerted by the hinge we know that we have found uh, the y component and the x component. We use Pythagoras theorem to find this is going to be the root of FHY or FHX squared plus FHY squared. Let's plug in the values we see the answer which we are going to get is going to be equal to the root of we have H, uh, FHX which is 232.23 squared plus negative 25 squared. Okay. So what I'm going to have, FH is going to be equal to, we can see that we are going to have 232.23 squared plus we ignore the negative but because that negative is going to be cancelled plus 25 squared then we get the square root okay so the answer i'm getting to be my force exerted by the hinge is 233.571 so we can just say 2 newtons so this is the force exerted by the hinge okay